Good morning, everyone. This is Julie Mann from Com Technologies, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with SureCall. Host is Jason Hayes. He's with us today, and he'll be presenting. If anyone has any questions, please free, feel free to submit them in the question box, at the, uh, and Jason will answer them at the end of today's presentation. Thank you, Jason, for your time and being here today. I am finished for now. You can take it, take it over. Okay, great. Thank you, Julie. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, as always, I'm happy to be here and happy to be able to talk about some SureCall products and some things that we have uh, on the horizon. Um, like Julie mentioned, we'll have some time at the end for whatever questions you may have. I will try to keep this webinar to about 20 to 25 minutes, and so that's my goal. I don't want to keep you too, too long. Um, let's just jump right into it. Today we're going to be talking about SureCall's mobile booster lineup, and specifically we're going to be introducing a new product, the Fusion Trek, which I'm really excited to talk about and present to you. The Fusion Trek is slated to be available for shipment sometime in February, I'm guessing within the next three weeks roughly. <clears throat> so like I said, let's just jump right into it. These are the three mobile solutions that are going to kind of round out our mobile collection. Uh, as you can see, we've got the Fusion to Go 2.0. That's kind of our tried and true standard mobile booster with the magnet mount antenna and the inside patch antenna and then the, uh, the Fusion to Go 2.0 for the RV, which is the same concept, just a little bit uh, beefier with a bigger Omni antenna and a lot more cable so that we can cover an RV. And then over there on the right, you see the Fusion Trek. And at first glance, you can tell it's a kind of a complete, uh, completely different design, kind of a complete turnaround from what we've always done with our mobile solutions. And I will get into that more here in just a little bit. As always, keep in mind that uh, all of our boosters are FCC and Industry Canada approved. They're carrier approved and certified. They come with a three-year warranty and lifetime pre and post sales and tech support. So first off, the Fusion Go 2.0, this is a little bit closer look. You can see the chassis is metallic. Uh, that's designed to go under the driver's seat or the passenger seat, somewhere tucked out of the way. Uh, and then you have that magnet mount antenna that goes on the roof and connects to the uh, outside antenna port on the booster. And then you have the inside uh, slim uh, antenna that that comes with Velcro so that you can attach it to either the shoulder or the armrest of the seat. Uh, somewhere in the center of the vehicle is best. It's going to broadcast that boosted signal to, to to all the phones in the vehicle wirelessly. So uh, that's a that's a a great like I said tried and true booster setup. This is a, a image of the packaging. And we actually have uh, we have a Fusion to Go 3.0 version that's coming out probably in March or April, and we'll be announcing that very soon. But in preparation for that, I don't know uh, how many of you are familiar with this, but the MSRP on this particular booster kit used to be 379, and we've dropped it to 299 in preparation for the the rollout of the 3.0. So I wish I could talk more about the Fusion to Go 3.0, but I'll have to do another webinar in a couple of months and, and introduce that when I'm uh, green-lighted to do so. So for now, let's talk about the Fusion to Go 2.0 at the reduced MSRP. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a vehicle booster kit for 2G, 3G, and 4G LTE. So it's boosting voice and data. It supports multiple users. It's a pretty straightforward plug-and-play operation, and of course, we already talked about the three-year warranty. The idea with this booster is to get you through that dead zone, so from one coverage area to the next, this kit will get you about 25 to 30 miles further down the road without dropping a call, keep you connected to your call and also your, your data if you're using GPS or an app on your phone while you're driving. This will keep you connected all the way through that dead spot. This is a diagram of the installation. 
And like we already discussed, you see the booster there illustrated on the floor, the magnet mount antenna up on the roof, and then the inside antenna centrally located. Those wires are very easy to uh, kind of tuck inside the rubber seal around the door and keep them out of the way, similar to like an XM uh, radio antenna. You would do the, the same way. And then, of course, this, this powers from your cigarette lighter or your DC power supply in the vehicle. The Fusion to Go RV is the same basic concept. Uh, again, what we're doing is we're including a, a omnidirectional outside antenna that can mount on the roof of the RV and a lot more cable to get it into the RV. And then you can see that, uh, that little black antenna that connects to the booster, which can be centrally located anywhere inside the RV and will transmit that boosted signal. Uh, inside your RV. So this is designed for mobile use as well, or if you park, you know, you can fire this up and, and receive signal in the woods or the mountains or the lake or wherever you might be. So same as the, uh, the Fusion to Go 2.0 for the vehicle, for a smaller vehicle, this boosts 2G, 3G, and 4G LTE, so voice and data, multiple users, you can see the diagram over there on the right, and this also is reduced in price by almost $100 in preparation for the, the new upgrade, uh, the Fusion to Go 3.0 RV, which is coming out soon. So you can see my, my diagram off to the right there, all the components that are included here. You know, you've got a DC power supply and an AC power supply, depending on what you're using it for and what you need omnidirectional antenna, the interior antenna, and a longer length of cable. So this is the diagram that we have for the Fusion to Go RV, and that is a funky looking RV. I don't know <laughs> what happened with the wheels on that thing. It looks like the rear wheel, uh, that thing, it's a little, it's a little uh, off balance <laughs> to me, but, but anyway, you get the idea. Uh, the omnidirectional antenna, of course, has to go on the roof. Uh, they've got this positioned at the rear of the RV. I don't think that's really a big deal where you put it, but it's easy to mount and then wired inside the booster can go just about anywhere. We recommend that it's centrally located if possible. So now let's get to the meat of what I'm really excited to talk to you about. This is the Fusion Trek. And like I said, this is a brand new product that we're excited to roll out um, shipping sometime in February. I'm guessing the second week of February, but we will keep you all posted. Like all the other boosters that we've talked about, this is 2G, 3G, 4G LTE. So it's voice and data for any phone, any carrier, and it supports multiple users wirelessly, just like, just like the rest of them. There is a difference with this one in that um, it utilizes this magnetic cradle. So this cradle can actually attach to the vent uh, of the vehicle and your phone then, you know, you have a magnet that you can stick on your phone and then when you get in the vehicle, you just uh, attach your phone to this magnetic cradle and you're good to go. It's receiving a full signal boost right into the back of the phone's antenna. So the nicest thing with the Fusion Trek, and I'll get into this more here in a little bit, is that you don't have to have an outside antenna or any wires running across the roof and, and tucked into the door frame or anything like that. This is the first vehicle booster of its kind that takes away the need for a magnet mount antenna on the roof. So if you've had one of our Fusion to Go 2.0s, they work amazingly well. But we've had a couple of people say, man, when I go through the car wash, I have to remember to take that magnet mount antenna off, otherwise the car wash rips it off and pulls my cable too tight and I have to reset it up and it's just a hassle. So now you don't have to think about that because everything's contained inside the vehicle. The MSRP on this also is only $199. We were able to get it way down because the engineering is just a lot simpler. The booster and the antenna are built into that unit uh, that you'll see here uh, that goes in the back window. So whether it's a truck or a car, you know, it goes right on the back window. It's got a little suction cup. It's also got a, a flat base that you can mount right on the platform uh, in the back window there and then run the wire 
between the seats under the floor mats and up into that cradle antenna and then just plug it into your your DC power supply and everything's fired up and good to go so this is uh, you can slap any phone on that cradle and it will receive a signal boost but primarily just the phone that's on the cradle is is the one getting the boost it's not gonna send that signal throughout the whole vehicle although we have seen some of that it's not really designed for that so keep that in mind this is uh, this is kind of um, possible to support multiple users but we're really pushing it as more of a single user uh, booster so let me get into some more images here you can see this is a good shot of this thing going in the back window of a vehicle center of the back seat you know if possible is the best it's fairly unobtrusive so when you look in your rear view mirror you just have a vertical line and not too much obstruction it's perfectly safe and you can't really well you might be able to see the reflection of the suction cup right above this unit and again this unit contains the outside antenna and the booster all in this one tower looking piece so that's how we were able to shave costs down and it works incredibly well it performs just as well in our testing uh, as the fusion to go 2.0 which has the outside antenna so for your customers that want to save a little bit of money or don't want an antenna on the roof this is a home run and you can see here this is in the cab of a pickup truck he's actually using the suction cup mount only and he's removed the flat base and he's just mounting that right to the back window of the, the pickup truck and it's going to work uh, just as well and then of course this is another shot of our vent clip magnetic cradle that's mounted right there on the dash and and uh, ready ready to receive your phone so I know that was a quick uh, run through um, I am open for any questions that anyone may have thank you Jason for that wonderful presentation and it looks like we do have some questions for you maybe not a whole lot but we'll get started here um, the cradle that you spoke about um, can it run without being plugged in or does it always need the power adapter yeah it's really going to perform best with the power adapter um, if if you have everything plugged in but no power going to it there's really it's not really serving any purpose so um, the magnet will still work you can still attach your phone and it'll hold your phone but it's not going to be getting a signal boost unless the booster is plugged in thank you got another question here for you um, any thoughts on extending the residual uh, range to all users in the car so that everyone can use it? Yeah, absolutely. We've had some discussion about that, and uh, that's a great question. Chances are, uh, down the line, we'll come out with a Fusion Trek 2.0 that has a more powerful antenna that can transmit that boosted signal into the cab of the vehicle. The tricky part is um, because the antenna is on the inside of the car now instead of, you know, on the roof of the vehicle, um, you, you're setting yourself up. If you have a, a multi-user inside antenna, you're setting yourself up for interference. The two antennas trying to communicate to one another and creating noise or feedback, just like you would if you had a microphone too close to a speaker. When we have the magnetic mount antenna on the roof, the roof of the car creates a natural barrier between the two antennas, and that's not an issue, which is why we can have a more powerful inside antenna without any problem. So once the engineers can isolate uh, that inside antenna inside that, that tower base, um, I think we can overcome that issue and probably give you a more powerful antenna. But for the time being, um, we've just reduced the cost and made it kind of a single user plug and play. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Got another question here for you. Are there options for multiple colors or is the gray the standard color for all of them? Great question. Uh, I haven't heard any talk of multiple colors, um, although that's a really good idea. You know, people may not like just the standard gray. Um, along those lines, I'm honestly not sure what they finally kind of settled on. The images I have are, are of the prototype, 
and I know it's going to be either silver, black, or gray, or kind of a combination of those three. Um, but I haven't heard any talk of multiple color options, though that's always a possibility. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, next question. What is the distance of the signal from automobile to user? If the user steps out of the vehicle, for example, how far can he take advantage of the boost? That's a great question. You know, with the Fusion to Go 2.0, as well as the Fusion to Go RV 2.0, um, that can fluctuate a little bit because you're using an, a multi-user inside antenna. So I've actually, I've had one of these in my van when I've taken kids up to scout camp up on the mountain and everyone is kind of crowded around my van because they're, they're getting a little signal bubble even outside the vehicle. Uh, so that those boosters have the capacity to do that though Keep in mind, we are a little bit at the mercy of the, the signal that we're starting from. The weaker the outside signal is to begin with, the smaller that bubble gets to where you may actually have to get inside the vehicle or if it's a really bad signal area, possibly even get your phone right up to that inside antenna. Um, on the Fusion to go, or excuse me, on the Fusion Trek, because it's a single user antenna, you're really going to want your phone on that inside magnet antenna to receive the signal boost. So you're really you're not going to see much benefit with the Fusion Trek outside the car. Thank you very much. Next question for you. Um, the question reads here: If I have a mobile office or surveillance team I work with that stays overnight in their trucks. Uh, will they need four antennas for all four investigative units, or is it, or is there a way we can boost for all four of them? For all four investigative units, I'm not sure I follow the question, um, but this is going to boost signal for uh, all carriers' frequencies in the U.S. and Canada simultaneously. So you shouldn't you shouldn't need to have anything other than this to boost all cellular signals uh, in one vehicle. Um, if you've got different vehicles, you're going to want a booster in each vehicle. Uh, but you know you won't need more than one antenna or more than one booster per vehicle, and it will cover all cellular frequencies that you need. Um, again, I'm I'm a little confused by the question, but I hope that's what you were getting at. If not. Uh, go ahead and submit another question. I'll try to clarify. Sorry about that. No, no problem at all. Um, I got another one here for you. Uh, referring back to the color option, um, is there a minimum order needed uh, for third-party company to label SureCall device with their own logo? For example, Metro would want them orange, and the Dodgers bullpen car would want it would want it blue, for example, and some of partners um, mandate minimum order of a thousand units for custom color options. That's a great question. Um, just let me start by saying we would love to have a discussion about doing some sort of a, a labeling option for uh, a big opportunity like that. That being said, I don't know off the top of my head what the minimum order quantity would be but I would love to talk to you about it and get a conversation going with my production team. And we could certainly find that out and see what it would take. I'm guessing it would probably be less than a thousand units, but I honestly don't know. So my contact info is going to pop up at the, at the end of this presentation. And I encourage you to please uh, reach out to me either by phone or email and let's talk about it. We would love to help you out with that. Terrific, no problem with that. Um, can you mention again when this product will, will be available when you guys are rolling it out? I know you touched on that. Can you can you repeat? Yeah, absolutely. So we're looking at the second week in February. Uh, it may be sooner than that. All I have right now is that it's sometime next month. My best guess is second week in February. Thank you, Jason. Uh, another question here for you. Um, do cell boosters increase radiation to cell phones? That's a great question, and I get this question occasionally, and 
Um, in all reality, if anything, the, the, the studies that have been conducted indicate that the radiation that your phone puts off uh, comes from the battery or the fact that your phone is putting off, you know, it's generating power, it's using power, it's putting off radiation that way. The cellular signal itself is a, a radio wave. So um, in and of itself, it's not creating radiation. So if anything, the fact that your phone is getting a stronger signal to it means that the battery doesn't have to work as hard. Your battery lasts longer. Your phone's not putting out as much power that way. So if anything, we should actually be reducing the radiation. But that's just my common sense approach to it. I haven't actually seen a study put out that says, hey, we've noticed less radiation coming off the phone when it has a booster. But I also haven't seen anything to indicate that a booster puts off uh, more radiation or that radiation is created by a, a radio wave or a cellular signal at all. Thank you, Jason, for answering those questions. Appreciate it very much. And thank you to everyone for attending today. And if anyone has any further questions, please feel free to contact your sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. And if you wish to view any of the products mentioned or shown today, please visit us at www.microcom.us. Please remember this webinar presentation has been recorded and it will be uploaded to our Microcom YouTube channel. So if you would like to view it again, you can certainly do so on YouTube. Thank you, Jason, for your time. Appreciate all the information. And as always, you give a very, uh, very enjoyable presentation. Have a wonderful Thanks, day, Julie. everybody. You are certainly Appreciate welcome. Appreciate it, team. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye.